At the beginning of the 18th century, the Christian faith entered the lands of Korea for the first time at the initiative of some lay people from whose efforts without pastors, a strong and fervent community emerged. It was not until 1836 that the first missionaries, coming from France, entered the country stealthily, and this community, with the persecutions of 1839, 1846, and 1866, 103 martyrs flourished, among which stand out the first priest and ardent pastor of souls, Andre King Taegon, and to the distinguished lay apostle Paul Chong Hassang, who were joined by many lay people, men and women, married and single, old, young, and children, all of them consecrated with their witness and blood the first fruits of the Korean church. Below we highlight the last exhortation of Saint Andrew King Ket Taegon to his flock. These are the words of a missionary about to be martyred, and they should be read with that in mind. The church placed him in the office of readings in memory of those holy martyrs on 20 September. From the last exhortations of Saint Andrew King Taegon, priest and martyr, faith is crowned by love and perseverance. My dear brethren and friends, consider how God at the beginning of time arranged the heavens, the earth, and all things. Meditate also with that special intention he created the human being in his image and likeness. If therefore in his life of dangers and misery we did not recognize the Creator, it will be of no use to us to be born and continue to live. Already in this word by divine grace, by the same grace we receive baptism, entering the bosom of the church and becoming disciples of the Lord. But Bearing in this way the precious name of Christians, what good will so great a name be for us if in reality we are not? It would be useless for us to be born and join the church if we betray the Lord and His grace. It would be better for us not to have been born than, having received His grace, to sin against Him. Consider the farmer as he sows his seed in the field. First he prepares the ground with the sweat of his brow and then he cast the precious seed. When harvest time comes, he rejoices in his heart with the ears full, forgetting his toil and sweat, and dancing for joy. If, however, the ears remain empty, being nothing more than straw and husk, the farmer deplores the hard labor with which he sweated, feeling the more desperate the more he work. In like manner the Lord tills the earth as his field, we have been the grains of rice, he waters us with his blood in his incarnation and redemption so that we may grow in nature. When the harvest time comes in the day of judgment, whoever is found in nature by grace will enjoy the kingdom of heaven as an adopted son of God. As for the others who have not matured, they will become enemies, punished forever, though they have also become adopted children of God by baptism. Dear brothers, Remember that our Lord Jesus, descending into this world, suffered countless pains, and having founded the church by his passion, he makes it grow to the sufferings of the faithful. Despite all the pressures and persecutions, earthly powers will not be able to prevail. From the ascension of Christ and the time of the apostles until today, the Holy Church continues to grow in the midst of tribulations. Also in our land of Korea, during the 50 or 60 years that the Holy Church has been established here, the faithful have always suffered persecution. Today the persecution has reignited. Many friends are, like me, thrown into prison, while you will also suffer tribulations. United in one body, how will our hearts not be sad? How humanly do we not experience the pain of separation? But God, as the scripture says, cares for every hair of our head, and does not so in all wisdom. Therefore, how can we not consider this persecution except as permitted by the Lord, or even His reward, or even His penalty? Embrace, therefore, the will of God, fighting with all your heart for your leader Jesus and conquering the devil, already conquered by Him. I beg you, do not set aside brotherly love, but help one another for serving until the Lord has mercy on us and removes the relation. 
there are 20 of us here, and by the grace of God, everyone is still okay. Should any one of us die, I beg you not to neglect his family. I still have many things to say to you, but how can I express it in an ink and paper? So I will finish my letter. As the struggle approaches, I finally ask you to walk faithfully, so that in heaven we can congratulate each other. I leave you here, my keys of love.